I think it's difficult to point to any one source. You know, there's been lots of periods in my life when I've encountered poetry and it's meant something different to me. So um, I think I pretty much ignored it at school. And I don't remember much of it at school, to be absolutely honest. I don't remember being asked to write one single piece of what we'd now call creative writing, a short poem. And other than that, I don't remember coming across it so much. Um, I, I mean, for example, I remember living in a one-room flat in King's Cross in the early 90s. And whoever had been there before me had left the collective Philip Larkin. And, and I just read it every night and um, it really sank in, in a way. I, I knew Larkin's work, or I thought I knew Larkin's work, but it really, reading it in that way, reading it differently, reading it in that concentratedness of it, it really made a difference, you know, um, made a kind of indelible impression. And, and that's happened with, with, with lots of different uh, writers. Um, but no, no one kind of Damascene moment where I've kind of been converted, as it were. I mean, I, I studied art, so I didn't have any kind of ambitions to to be a writer anyway until, until you know, I was well into my 20s. Um, I knew poetry was there, but I didn't, I didn't know very much about it. Um, and I wasn't actively seeking it out either. So I'm afraid I, I, can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't point to any single moment where I'd, I, I, my head was done in or anything. Well, it'd be a bit cheeky of me. Um, and also a kind of hoodwinking exercise if I said there was any one way that it happened, because it just isn't like that. It's, um, there's, there's a, it's multitudinous, you know, the way, the way you can kind of get in the mood to sit, want to sit down and start writing. I, I, it, it can be anything. I mean, um, no, normally it's when I'm on the move. Um, if I sit down and, and think I'm going to do something now, I'm going to write something, that, that just doesn't work. So, so being on the move, being active, uh, but even passively on the move, like on a, on a train, is... Um, is good but I'm really generalizing now and it's difficult to talk about the genesis of these things they start in the wind you know you just have a kind of little phrase in your head sometimes not even the words just the kind of shape of the word you know what the words are going to kind of fit if you like um, a, a, like a musical phrase and then um, a, you reach a point of pressure this might be days weeks months later where you just absolutely have to sit down and get write it down and I often find that you edit out the stuff that's kind of um, hasn't got any legs and the stuff that, that, that has kind of lasted in the memory for long enough deserves to, you know, it's made it to that point where it's cast into a sentence on a, on a hard drive or whatever, um, and then it's written down. But I've thought about this, and I've been asked this before, and when, when you look back and try and think about an ideal way of being in the, getting into the mood to write or being inspired, it's very, very, very dangerous to start kind of advising people because if I'm absolutely honest, I can't start applying schema or, or, or giving people kind of hints as to how they might get in the mood. It just doesn't work like that, ever. Not for me, anyway. Not for lots of writers. I talk to lots of writers and it's, it's kind of a little bit like what I've just said. I mean, everyone's a little bit different as well, but... I mean, sometimes they're nearly there, you know, straight away. Um, they come out really smartly and, and there they are. And, and that's, fun, you know, that's kind of fantastic when that happens. But it doesn't happen so often. Um, I, suppose, I suppose I do, again, what lot, lots of writers do. I, I try to put some distance between myself and the draft or the, the early drafts, you know, so I put it away. Or, or I do stupid things like I, I read the draft in a place, a, a, a great distance away from where it was first written. Um, I remember when I first started writing, I had a job and I used to work an hour on, an hour off an inquiry desk in a library. And sometimes I used to get a draft and I used to take it down to Goulburn Road into one of these Portuguese cafes and just read it. And just being a few hundred yards away from where I'd been working on it, it sounds ridiculous, but it, it, for me it made a kind of difference. It put some air between me and the draft. Uh, but time is the best. Temporal space is what you're lo really looking for. And if you can afford to just let things sit for a while. That's usually the best way of, I, I find the best way to, to, to you know, reapproach things, think about them, edit them. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you dozens and dozens of drafts, but, but, but sometimes two or three, you know, it's fantastic when that happens. I, I don't know whether it's, I mean, if, if that were true, even if we say that is true, I don't see how it's up to any poet or poem to make a concession to that or to or, or to go kind of beyond the, the, the realms of what you're interested in or interested in doing and to, to kind of reach out beyond that and, and attract these, re these readers, these other readers who, who are kind of not interested, who aren't being attracted to poetry, whoever they are. Um, 
So, so, so you're, you're on a pretty sticky wicket there. I don't, I don't know what Pochi's supposed to do about that. I mean, Pochi's very durable. I mean, there might not be many people interested in it at any one time, but if you kind of take a different view, it's been around forever, you know. It's, it's been around almost as long as it's been language, and in every culture, that's had a kind of formal um, verse. So, um, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Is that okay? The Dark Film is a book that came out last year and I'm, I'm finding out what it's about now because it's been reviewed, which is, is fantastic because I love being reviewed. It's like, you know, putting your ear to a door and listening to what people are saying about you and stuff. Um, and it's been interesting seeing what people are saying. You know, some people don't like it, some people do like it, some people have ideas about it that you hadn't, you hadn't envisaged uh, people having. So, so I, I'm, I'm all at sea as for pointing at, back at that book and telling you what it was all about. I can, I can only kind of look, look ahead. I'm currently working on a poem about um, consumer electronics, um, so so that, that that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of thinking about at the moment, and I'm trying to kind of work my way through at the moment. I hate that word about, by the way, about slippery word. Um, I, I don't know what my stuff's about. I don't. Know. Y yes, I mean I think the mediums change, but they'll. There's, there's poetry, you know, it's always going to be there, whether it's on, it's the, it's the larynx or it's calfskin vellum or it's rag paper or it's wood pulp paper or now it's on a, on a screen, now it's um, zeros and ones, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I, I think people will always be doing interesting things with language and um, different mediums will afford different ways of, of doing that. But I, I think there will just always be, be this kind of unkillable thing, um, poetry. Uh, and yes, I am interested in in, in, in a collaborative dimension, that's what you're asking me. I mean, I, I do lots of, of work with um, for radio, so, and that's kind of intrinsically collaborative, either either boldly so, you know, a producer will phone you up and ask you to write a poem on a, on a particular theme, so it, it very, feels very commissioned. Um, or, or, or sometimes more gentle and more nuanced than that, where you've a very, very general idea. Like, for instance, at the moment, I'm writing something about the internet and where the internet is, and cable, undersea cables and, and optical fibres. Um, I don't know much about that. The producer doesn't really know much about that. Um, we don't know whether we'll get a poem out of it, but we're kind of feeling our way into that. And I love that. I love that kind of collaborative um, dimension that you can sometimes you can sometimes have and with radio, especially. Not so much other. I've not I've not really tried in other mediums. I'm not working with. Comp I've got friends who work with composers and stuff. Um, that's something I'd like to do. But I think radio is brilliant. You know, that voice coming out of a wireless talk and it just concentrates the voice and uh, isolates the listener and has this an intimacy with the listener. I, I absolutely adore radio. Um, I, I, when, I, when I get asked this, I always try to imagine what I'd have said to myself, you know, um, and I probably wouldn't have been any use at all. Um, I mean, you're either going to do it or you're not in a way. And I, I think fall in love with, I, I think it's important to read a hell of a lot you know, read widely and adventurously. Um, but it's, it's important to kind of fall in love with, with, with poetry or a kind of poetry or a poet or even a kind of poem. So I'm, I'm being slightly vague here, but necessarily vague, I think. Um, if that, I mean, if that doesn't happen, if you don't have that kind of real connection, which, which is almost like a kind of love affair with a... And you, and you often end up hating the, the things that, you, you know, really kind of sparked you early on. But if that, if that doesn't happen... I think you, 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 you're wading through treacle in a way, and it, it's all a little bit, um, um, it, it just seems like too much like hard work to me then. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just do something else? Just, just fall in love with a poet or a poem. Um, and you're only going to do that by reading a lot and reading what right outside your comfort zone, you know? Well, I'm not naming names, unless you've got a witness protection program, which I'm guessing you haven't. Um, I, I think it's pretty invidious doing that. I mean, you know, sort of saying I, I like I like A and B and C, um, cause what about D, E, F all the way to Z? You know, there's all these other people you forget to mention who are actually uh, brilliant and all the rest of it. So um, I don't know. Is this a golden age for poetry? Or I was just talking to a, to a colleague of mine the other day about this. I don't know whether it is a golden age or it isn't a golden age. There's a lot of stuff out there, though. And it feels pretty Catholic, and it feels available as well. So, so on balance, I think these are good times 
for, for poets and for poetry. Uh, it might, might still need a little seeking out, but there's nothing wrong with that. I think it will find its readers. I think its readers will find it.